yeah dear uh, pure fb urologist viewers uh, good evening uh, once again we are today concentrating on the uh, semi live talk related to the stone as you all know yesterday we have spoken about the large volume stone how to do suction in pcnl similarly as you all know last 10 years management of stone has changed a lot uh, rirs retrograde intrarenal surgery um, as coming forward and replacing many of the uh, many of the other modalities for small stone volume even the guidelines au aeu guidelines and all guidelines are mentioning rirs in, in every uh, every management of every stone including more than 2 cm stones and uh, actually uh, the large stone volume how to do rirs is always tricky because many pe many urologists feel that pcnl is very fast and you can remove the stones with uh, 30 french and 20 french sheet but sometimes bleeding can occur and you may not be able to remove all these stones in pcnl you may need multiple tracks can all these be avoided by a good technical skill during rirs this is what our uh, focus today start and uh, dr anil um, shrestha from nepal who is my close friend uh, last 10 years uh, we have been associated and i have been to nepal to his uh, hospital a uh, wonderful environment there and i have uh, um, operated also i will introduce him at 5 o'clock at the moment uh, uh, for the people to join already uh, 30 people have joined we give some time for people to join meanwhile i will ask few questions to anil uh, so that by 5 o'clock we officially uh, start the program hi anil good evening and thank you for the accepting thank you for accepting the invitation how are you thank you chandramohan it's my pleasure always pleasure to be uh, in your program thank you for your kind invitation anil when did you start your uh, uh, pcnl and when you do start your rirs in your career like after mch what made you to learn rirs and who is your mentor actually i was impressed by the nature of surgery when i i first listened uh, and saw the surgery done by professor traxer in nepal it was in 2011 uh, oh. in one of the conferences organized by us he was a guest he was a um, uh, he was performing live surgery of rirs from kathmandu so i got an opportunity to meet with him interact with him then i developed interest then we we got e uh, equipment for ourselves then i i uh i i managed to uh visit his center tenor hospital in 2014 15 yeah uh, it there for some time and learned uh, learned rirs from him very nice uh, similarly 2009 i went to tenon hospital similar experience for me i have seen in nadiad uh, uh, mpuh when he first operated in 2008 a live workshop Uh, very happy to know that that uh, Oliver Traxer sir is mentor for both of us uh, because at that time in India and Nepal we don't have uh, any but I mean much uh, 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 urologists practicing RIRs and when you started you, your uh, uh, RIRs what was the scope initially used to what size uh, like larger size scope or uh, you had a P three P four something no, no, no. I, I I used uh, I my first scope was a uh, flex X two that time only X two not X two S X two from Carl's. Then I got a uh, P five oh, from P5. Olympus. Okay. And, yeah, and X C from Carl's Rose again. What are the laser missions uh, so far you have used? So I have used uh, various laser machines. Uh, initially, it was twenty uh, watt laser from Luminous. Uh, yeah, same thing. I also had the same. Yes. Then I I also used the twenty watt from Carl Stores. Oh, how was One, it? Oh, good. Something like luminous. It's not very good for dusting. I would say. Yeah, yeah. Because the they make they make pieces faster. Somehow energy yeah. is high. Yeah, energy is high. It's not a dusting machine. I would say. Yeah. And uh, 
Yeah, then later I I uh, I got uh, uh, Luminous P120, mm. P120, Quanta I used uh, I used uh, uh, that uh, from Lisa, from Sphinx. Yeah. Sphinx. So Sphinx. I, yeah, I have used various machines. Recently only I I used uh, um, uh, Zena laser machine from Zena German German yeah. machine, yeah. and hype hype ho. I've only used one hypo, very nice machine for dusting. Hypo. Watt laser. Hypo. Zena. Zena. Yeah, hypo. Yeah. Hypo. Italian hypo. machine. Okay, now we are going to start the program. Already uh, nearly more than 55 audience are there. Now I will share the screen and start the program. Uh, So good evening everybody, today uh, we are uh, starting at 5 p.m. The topic as you all know, video based surgical presentation on RIRS in large volume stone tips and tricks by Dr. Anil Shrestha. Anil Shrestha is a very close friend of me who encouraged me in these 10 years to do good work in RIRS. Almost on a monthly basis we exchange our knowledge and uh, he, has, uh, he is a very great human being in the sense he remembers the names of the doctors very well. He remembers the papers, international papers and their content very well. And he treats uh, uh, all the colleagues uh, with uh, open mind. And he invites and he is so friendly with everyone. I am fortunate to have a friend like him. He is Associate Professor of Urology, who is passionate about uh, endourology work. He is also coordinator for MCH Urology in Nepal. He is a member medical unit in Nepal he is also a member National Academy of Medical Sciences Kathmandu he is also a member Pearls group at the rate of Pearls as Endo Euro which is almost like a Petra group and they are doing a lot of research on the stone he has special interest in Endo Urology and stone management particularly regularly conducting workshops on flexible ultroscope and laser in fact I have been to Nepal two times uh, for RIRS workshop and uh, really enjoyed his uh, uh, hostage uh, so so much interest and so much skill he has uh, in RIRS so much skill numerous publications he have he also has come to our place and demonstrated nicely RIRS during the live surgeries not only with me but uh, nationally and internationally so with this introduction uh, without wasting time I hand over the program to Anil Shrestha Anil please I can't share, uh, Chandra. Yeah, you, 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 multiple participants can share. I clicked. Uh, now you see. I can't share again. Can, can Wait. you? Can you? Uh, I have just one second. Yeah, now you see. Is it coming or not? No, I'm, I'm trying. Now you see, I'm making all participant. Co you make him co-host. Is it coming? It should come now. Okay. We can coast if possible. Uh, I will make you uh, host also, co-host, and uh, let us see if it comes. Now I made you co-host. Let me see. If it is not coming, you rejoin. That will be the. Yeah, it is coming. It is coming. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Can you see my screen? 
Yes, yes, very well, and your voice is also clear. Good evening, everyone. Uh, once again, uh, I would like to thank Chandramon, my very good friend from Hyderabad, for kind invitation. Uh, so, uh, without wasting much time, uh, I'll go with my presentation now. Uh, so, the topic uh, I was given today was RIS for last volume stone tips and tricks. It's a very uh, tricky topic, I would say, Chandramon. Well, thank yeah, you for yeah. this. So, uh, I, 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 what I think is Chandramon has very carefully selected topic for me because he has mentioned uh, RIS for large volume stone, not large stone only. So, large stone is not always large volume stone. So, we have to rem uh, remember this. And I, I think uh, it will be worth spending few of my slides uh, emphasize, emphasizing what is large volume because uh, then only uh, you will understand the gravity of our uh, today's topic. So unfortunately, most of the guidelines uh, to date uh, have uh, uh, they, they have incorporated only one or two dimension stone size uh, instead of stone volume. I, uh, I, I believe that in future, the guidelines will, will be coming with a stone volume uh, rather than a stone size. So why stone volume is more important? So let's take a Rubik cube. So there are three pixels, A, B, and C. All are two centimeter in one dimension. But picture A, the, the, it is two into 0.5 into 0.5 centimeter size, which, is, which makes it 0 0.5 centimeter cube stone. Whereas picture B, it is two into one into 0 0.5, makes it one centimeter cube stone. Whereas picture three is a eight centimeter cubic uh, stone. So the difference between these three uh, stone size, if we measure it in one dimension, it is same. But if you take it as volume, then the difference may be uh, as high as 16 times, you know. So it is only a mathematical demonstration, illustration. But if we talk endourologically, if we break the stone size similar to picture A, then we'll make four pieces of 0 0.5 centimeter uh, fragments. Whereas if you take stone size of picture C, then similar size will be of 64 pieces. And see the number of fragments that we create in PCS after eight cubic centimeter stone rather than 0 0.5. So, the volume of the fragment we, we create is also high. And the time we take to ablate the uh, stone volume of eight cubic centimeter will also be high. So again, this is a CT picture. See both the uh, stone size is 25 millimeter in size, but the diamonds are dimensions are different. And the stone volume in first picture is almost 10,000 millimeter cube, whereas similar size 25 mm in one dimension, but the stone volume is only around 300, 3000 millimeter cube. So what makes large volumes uh, stone different in RIRS? Because it may affect st stone free rate, right? One, one thing, because the bulk of the stone is higher in large volume stone. Another is the time we take to dust and ablate the stone may be as high as 16 times, as we have seen from the previous pictures. So we take longer time to treat those stones, longer time. So in any endoirological procedure, longer duration of procedure means there may be a morbidities and complication related to that surgery. And again, ergonomy, you know, if you have to stand in one foot and press the uh, laser pedal with another foot and stand for couple of hours, then you get tired. And at the end of the surgery, if you are tired, then the, the performance is not good. Stone free, free rate goes down and chances of complication is high. So again, need of, need of um, staging may be there when we talk about large volume stone for RIRS. So let's talk about scope then. Is there any preferences or is there any uh, uh, suggested scopes for the last, last, last stones in RRS? No, but there is a distinct difference in the weight of scope 
that we carry during the RIRS, you know. When we do uh, flexible utroscopy using fiber optic scopes, then we have to connect the bulky camera head and the light source in the, in the uh, fiber optic scope. That, that makes the scope very heavy, you know, in comparison to other counterparts like uh, digital, reusable digitals are a little lighter, but nowadays we have uh, single use scopes from various companies, they are much lighter in weight, and maybe that that can be a benefit uh, in doing RIRS for large large volume stones. But it's just a uh, uh, statement to make. So, do you do we have any benefit of doing pre stenting when we we treat large volume stone? No extra benefit, but if you pre stent, the, then it facilitates the passage of larger ureteral axis. That is for true. And passage of larger uh, ureteral axis does have some benefit in doing large, vol large volume stone. But again, pre stenting is not mandatory. See, whenever we we uh, we use ureteral axis, we we always tell that use smaller size axis that accommodates your scope. Right? We always tell like that. But while doing uh, surgery for longer duration, if possible use safest larger axis seat possible because the duration is going to be longer in large volume stone. The larger axis seat will drain the irrigation fluid properly from the pelvic alicial system, keeping the intrarenal pressure low. That will again lead to low morbidity related to high pressures like rupture, extravasation of the fluid and infectious complication. Again, see, when we use larger axis seat, it is better for longer procedure, but, but again, at the cost of risk of injury associated with ureteral axis seat of the ureter. And always keep in mind to check the outflow from the ureteral axis seat whenever you do RRs, not only for large stone, even for normal size stone. But remember the fact, the inflow is not always equal to outflow. It is, outflow is always, uh, minimally low than the in inflow that we inject. So keep this fact in mind. So when we do longer procedure, then there will be cumulative rise in pressure inside the kidney. Yeah. So longer the procedure, morbid the procedure. The chances of complication is high. Chances of fever is high. Chances of extravasation is high. So keep that in mind. What about uh, digital versus uh, fiber optic scope for larger stone? Again, no benefit, no proven benefit. But the fact is that when we use digital scope, the vision is clear. Something like when the vision is clear, we can drive the car faster and drive the car safer. Yes. It's something like that. It's something like driving a car at night. If the vision is good, it is safe to drive faster. And from the literature, we know that. With the digital scope, the procedure can be a little faster, which again poses some benefit in treatment of larger stone with the RIRS. So, what are the laser machines that are good for good for uh, uh, treating large? Stone? For uh, for uh, expert like uh, Chandra Mohan, all the all the laser machines are good. Even he can treat a large stone with even thirty watt laser, normal normal Holmium Yag laser. But now in the market, there are various types of laser machines, including TFL, which is a new player in town. I don't have much experience, uh, but uh, it has theoretically, it has uh, proven uh, to be faster than Holmimiag laser and it produces fine dust. And we, we are uh, waiting for the more clinical uh, result to come in future. So, uh, I think when they, we have to treat a large size stone, I think we have to, it is advised and I, I recommend to do primary dusting technology because if you fragment the large volume stone, then the PCS will be full of fragments and you won't be able to make fine dust and the stone free rate goes down. So primary dusting followed by popcorning or pop dusting will give higher stone free rate in large volume stone. So to treat large volume stone, you have to acquire skill of proper dusting. That means painting technique or brushing technique. Do not touch the stone. Stay one, two millimeter away from the stone, not to break it. Move constantly. 
from surface to center and don't make holes. Another tips to uh, do proper dusting is if you stay too far from the stone, then your laser pulse are wasted in the water. They get easily absorbed in the water, you know? So the lithotripsy is not efficient. Again, if you touch the stone, if you go too near to the stone, then the fiber bond back and the damage to the uh, blast seal is very common and the stone may get fragmented instead of dusting. So see this video, uh, I was staying a little far initially, then there was no effect. When I go near about one to two centimeters, you can see the production of the dust. Again, I moved away. I took the fiber away, then I fired. There is no effect on the stone. So staying away from the stone makes wastage of the laser pulses and makes the procedure even longer. So it is very uh, important for endo to learn the skill of doing fine dusting, staying one to two millimeter distance from the stone to, to do proper dusting. So efficient dusting is keeping some good golden distance between the stone and the laser fiber, something like this. So doing good dusting is not only good setting of the laser, you know, laser setting doesn't, only laser setting doesn't give good dusting. You have to learn the skill. It, I think Chandramon will agree with me with the same setting, we can dust the stone and we can fragment the stone, right? Yeah. So, yes. So you have to learn the skill of doing dusting, you know, so uh, constantly move on the surface of the stone, do, do the painting technique, don't stay at the one place. Yeah, classical, classical painting. Yeah, classical painting. So this is one of uh, my uh, video of uh, 21 into 19 uh, millimeter pelvic stone. I used a luminous uh, 120 watt uh, laser with the energy setting of 0 0.4 Joule and 30 Hertz, 12 Watt. So uh, you can uh, appreciate that uh, I was con constantly moving over the surface and uh, uh, you can always, when, whenever you have a problem with the dusting and the, you, you have problem maintaining the distance, then you can ask your anesthetist to lower your the patient's respiratory rate, or you can sometimes ask for apnea. That will make uh, beginners to feel comfortable in maintaining distance and doing proper proper uh, dusting uh, I, I of the stone. I also strongly recommend that to go for GA in a large volume stone so that you are comfortable. I agree that. Yes. Uh, in COVID era, we, we started doing uh, RIS in, uh, uh, in, uh, in spinal and as, as well. But uh, today morning, I did a spinal... Uh, uh, RIS in spinal anesthesia for upper ureteric stone. I had a difficult time because in ureter you get very little space uh, for the movement. So uh, Chandramon is right. Uh, I, I even I also personally prefer uh, general anesthesia for uh, RIS. Yes. See uh, after after dusting, uh, try to uh, increase the height of the stone and uh, uh, keep the surface area as uh, equal as possible you know you, you just decrease decrease the um, uh, uh, volume decrease height of the uh, height of the stone like the stone, stone in this picture because this will give you a good dusting this will prevent stone from breakage and it will also prevent creation of the larger fragments initially in the surgery which is very important if you don't produce larger fragments in the very beginning of surgery, then you are doing good dusting. So uh, you can appreciate in this uh, video, the same same uh, stone uh, that I was ablating. Now uh, it is almost like a crust. It is like a slate of few millimeter of thickness. Uh, I, I almost spent around um, 70 minutes uh, for the dusting of the 21 mm stone. Now it is almost like a like a crust or a few millimeter slate. After that, then you know, when the stone starts breaking, then you have to do a, a good popcorn or pop dusting, depending upon the which laser machine do you have. So uh, I also suggest uh, to spend uh, to spend some good amount of time, like five to seven minutes of 
pop counting or pop dusting to produce final final result so see there will be a lots of dust and micro fragments uh, inside the pcs when you when we are dealing with large size uh, stone so it's not a problem but the problem is don't miss see see in this this uh, uh, frame of the video there is a significant size of fragment right so when there are lots of fragments in pcs there is a tendency that we miss larger fragments behind the dust you have to be careful if you have produced fine dust then with a manual uh, irrigation you can flush the stone and see the uh, fragment size behind behind the dust and also simultaneously use fluoroscopy to pick the larger fragments and do do uh, uh, proper uh, pop pop dusting to produce good dust because the amount of dust and fragments in the PCS with the larger stone is tremendous and it can give uh, complications like uh, Steinstrasse. Yeah, so it is a very uh, fine dust. Yeah, to, to conclude, uh, uh, large stone treatment with RIRS is not a routine practice. I, I don't do, I, I don't do large stone with RIRS because we normally do PCNLs, but uh, there are situations when we have to deal large stone with RIRS and you can't avoid that always and avoid true white stone or avoid doing infective stone with RIRS because because the morbidity goes high uh, the post of fever and sepsis may go very high always talk about talk to patient about second session need of second session whenever you do a stone size bigger than two two centimeter and chances of post-operative fever as well use access it whenever possible you have to dust the stone with patience you have to have some patience to do uh, rirs and even more for larger stones and consider stenting the patient because uh, because of the amount of dust and micro fragments that we create at the end thank you yeah that's uh, that's really great oh my god you stick on to time it again shows that you are uh, standard and uh, you are uh, uh, regular in touch with the international society. This is what I wanted actually. If uh, somebody want to present both uh, in 20 minutes, you have really done it. This is one of the crisp presentations I must tell. Even in this uh, week, I must accept that you have presented very well. Now, because we have time, there are a couple of questions uh, asked uh, from Abaljin Hussein how to deal with the anterior lower pole stone any specific point you want to mention anterior lower polar stones comment the lower polar stones are always a challenge uh, when when uh, doing rrs especially uh, especially <clears throat> if the stone bulk is uh, large anterior lower pole uh, lower pole uh, stones are uh, ergonomically difficult stone for our rrs i would say uh, because uh, you have your wrist will be like this when you do RIRS in anterior lower pole stone. Yes. So, so uh, for a long you, time you cannot do. Yeah, you can you can uh, lower the uh, do a Trendelenburg position of the bed with some tilting of the tilting of the ipsilateral tilting of the bed as well. But again, it, it is a challenging ergonomically challenging. But whenever I do lower pole anterior, I I change the lever not with thumb you know i change with my index finger so my hand stays like this oh because so i don't hold my scope like this in for anterior lower pole stone okay. i do like this so i, I uh, work with index finger in in that circumstance how oh, is it i didn't know this fantastic so other question is uh, in laser settings uh, initial part uh, do you mind increasing energy because anyway it will not become pieces you can do faster so yes. rest of the laser mission energy is because you have 120 watts luminous laser what is the energy maximum you go when you wanted to do it faster in the initial part i mean to say even though you wanted to dust i remember your paper i think your poster in one of uh, one of the conferences yeah, right different laser settings uh, you have the change in laser settings yes, according sir. to the time of the surgery yes. and i i agree with you chandramon because in large stone what happens is stone doesn't move even yes. 
you, if you increase the joule, you know, stone doesn't move. And you, if you have fair uh, skill of the dusting technique, then you can prevent fragmentation. Yes. Uh, what I do is, uh, depending upon the HU of the stone, I yeah. go up to 0.8 joule. How much? I don't go B. How much? 0.8. 0.8. Even in 100 watt laser, you will not go more than that. No, no, no. I don't go more That's than very that. Very important uh, point. Uh, I go up to 1.5, 1.2, 1.5, but definitely some small chips will form than the dust. I agree. Uh, even if but you I, are, sometimes. But I increase the frequency with uh, my 120 watt laser, you know. Yeah. 0.8, I go up to 40. So yeah. It makes the procedure a little faster, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we want to do it faster. That is the aim of discussion also because time matters. Yes. The other question from Govardhan Reddy is, what is the antibiotic profile in your routine RIRS, either large or small? Will you repeat the antibiotic after one hour like that? It is a must for us to have negative urine culture in all RIRS. All right. That is must. I, I I give uh, ceftriaxone one gram for all my patient. Do yeah. it a small or a large stone, and uh, I conveyed a study in my department uh, with uh, around eighty patients uh, with single dose uh, ceftriaxone one gram half an hour uh, at, uh, half an hour before surgery or at the time of induction of anesthesia with no oral uh, antibiotic on discharge and no repetition of antibiotic. The um, we what we found is infective complication is same in both the groups. So I, so I have you have you ever used aminoglycosides uh, anything like that? Uh, so aminoglycoside I have used, but uh, for routine practice I use uh, ceftriaxone, cephalosporins group, okay. one gram. Uh, previously I used to use amikacin that is aminoglycoside. Uh, now I have stopped. I also slightly on the lower side. But I give three dosages, one before surgery, one on the evening and next day morning and discharge. Uh, that uh, I am not changing because I am in private practice, I have never tried anything else. Uh, Rajender, can you show these uh, questions? Uh, more questions, lot of audience, 240 on board. Uh, that shows uh, the importance of your talk. Uh, what What is uh, Dr. Griffin? Um, what time frame you call it quit say halt the procedure and come back later sir yes. That's, i was expecting this question uh, when i was preparing my slides yeah. and it's a valid question and one should know you know because see uh, as i have mentioned in my talk to prevent losing time of lithotripsy you have to maintain that golden distance from laser fiber to the stone so that you you can ablate the stone maximum in single setting you know single yeah, session yeah. That is very so important. My, my, yeah very important and my my comfortable time is 90 minutes i do 90 minutes comfortably uh rirs but when it exceeds 90 minutes to two hours then the chances of complication may go high so my comfort zone is 90 minutes i i have a question you don't need to see the cm repeatedly that is the one thing you oh. don't no, uh, no, no. You are seeing the stone, you can continue. Second thing is, uh, no. you feel little bit of pain in the thumb at the end of one and a half hour sometimes. Uh, right leg and uh, thumb will have little bit of pain. Like, apart from that, not too much. Uh, definitely, as you said, uh, the disposable scopes will be around 70 grams, whereas these are 262 grams. So, it's a first slide is a very valid slide with scope. and. Uh, which is the best laser fiber? Is it at three o'clock or nine o'clock? Uh, I don't think so. But what is your opinion? Uh, the, is it the laser fiber coming out at three and doesn't make any difference, particularly in large stone? I feel depends for large stone, but uh, coming out from nine or three o'clock makes difference for uh, some very special condition stone in the very uh, narrow lum stone. luminal. Larger yeah. stones, I don't think it makes uh, any. Difference. Larger stones, no. That that was question was. Uh, uh, Abdulajim Hussain Khalifa. Uh, another question is Ramakrishna. Large stones takes longer time, a lot of body pain, aches, and knee pain. How about RIRS in sitting position? Your experience, sir? Because yes, uh, hmm, Ramakrishna is my consultant, I think. He does in sitting position all these all these surgeries. I mean all the RIRS surgeries. What is your opinion? I I personally do in standing position like you do. Uh, yeah, I also standing position. I can't do RS in sitting. I'm surprised my colleague 
uh, Ram Krishna for last 10 years uh, sit, uh, does in sitting position, uh, it will have a little bit of problems in properly uh, painting, but somehow he does. He, your elbow raises a little bit, but he does. He is very comfortable. I, I would say it's a personal preference. We, yeah, in, uh, there is a uh, surgeon who does laparoscopic surgery in sitting position. Yeah, that is really great. I, I can't imagine. Yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine. Personal preference. Yeah, that's okay. It's all preference. Uh, usually, culture will be positive in all stented patients. How do you manage, sir? Especially in large stone, you. That's a good question, in fact. In stented patients, after four days, bacteria will be there. Uh, some yeah. culture positive is expected. We uh, we we don't do uh, pre-stenting for a longer duration, you know. Uh, so yeah. don't stent a patient for a longer duration. Yeah. So if if you avoid stenting for a longer duration, then the bacteria uh, chances of bacteria will, will go down. Again, uh, if you have a persistent bacteria, then take out the stain, give some antibiotic, make the urine culture negative, then then go. Because once you have stented, the uh, ureter remains accommodative for a few weeks. So sometimes Oliver Traxer paper says that one time stented in life, lifelong the ureter is accommodable. I mean, he says that usually it is a good ureter, like his uh, comment. And uh, one name from uh, in Urdu, how long can you keep the ureteric access sheath in the, in the, uh, especially larger access sheath in the ureter? How much time you can keep? You said one and a half hour. Again, use of larger access sheath has to be balanced, you know. It, it has yeah. some advantages, but yeah. also disadvantages also. So avoid using longer than 90 minutes. Uh, at which level you want to keep your laser, he asked. Doesn't make any ureteral access sheet, I mean to say. Oh, okay, just I always keep ureteral access sheet just above SI joint. Yeah, above SI joint. Even I keep it in the mid ureter, I don't go high. I don't okay. keep at the UVJ. Uh, I'm fair enough in the middle part, which is straight. So that the movements are little easy. It is a curved part, so sometimes damage can occur. I mean, I also feel comfortable in the mid part. Initially, there was a concept of female and male uh, ureteral access sheet. I think it's long gone now. Yeah, I yeah. Use same access sheet for both male and female. I, I also came to know recently through a paper that six feet tall and five feet tall ureter difference is only four millimeters they are selling, four to six millimeters. Ureter won't be so long like because it's tall. That is a, I am surprised to see that paper. That's why access sheath length uh, does not make difference too much. They are saying that's a valid point. Which anesthesia do you prefer for large stone burden? As you said, general anesthesia, they, again, a uh, lot of people, I, I strongly prefer general anesthesia uh, for main reason is that I keep apnea whenever I am doing it at infant diplom. Uh, as you said, uh, my concentration will be better and continuously at a pace what my mind says I can go. I need not depend on any other extraneous factors. Whatever my mind says, I carry on. I, I, I think same with you. More same here. with me. Yeah. As you said today, spinal anesthesia, upper ureter is very difficult today what you said. I, I, I experienced this this morning. If you accidentally touch the mucosa and if it starts bleeding, then vision goes out. Yeah. Everything goes out, you know. Everything goes off. Then the procedure has to be stopped. In RIR, if something goes wrong, it takes a lot of time. If everything is going well, it is good. I also ask you a question. Do you remove the scope in between? I don't remove because the uniform... I never, uh, I never remove. Yeah, never. yeah. Uh, that is an important point. Uh, uh, you should not remove unnecessarily scope clean or basket. Continue whatever time you... At the end, you see whatever the thing. Then, um, Ratish Rajendran, do you use furosemide uh, in between the surgery? What is the profile followed? Furosemide uh, no, in between. I never use. I I also don't use furosemide. Rarely I use hydrocortisone after 2 hours, uh, 50 mg, no scientific uh, basis for that. I cannot talk in this forum, that is personal I am telling. At which level you, okay, uh, RIR is in ADPKD kidneys with large volume stone burden. How difficult navigating scope through the PCS is more, uh, more, uh, anyway it's a good question, uh, but more theoretical for us. Large tag I have not seen in uh, 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 ADPKD, what is your experience? So in ADPKD, I have been, done few RIRs, but the all the RIRs I have done in ADPKD are not very large stones. Yes, so somehow I also feel because they come with pain early. 
their ultrasound rates and detection rate of uh, stones is very high but overall i feel difficult somehow rirs in edpkd you need more skill and scope damage if it is in a long in it's like a pseudo infant develop uh, all the tracks are narrow you agree this is compressed compressed intrinsically you know yeah yeah compressed compressed uh, so i uh, this these are the questions i wanted to ask uh, one important point i have seen high frequency with thulium fiber laser made at the end popcorn very very good uh, that i am uh, i am thinking that even if i make fragments initially half of the stone i'll make a uh, powder after that i deliberately once the space i get in the calyx especially not in pelvis definitely not in pelvis if it is pelvic stone i say that absolute powder if it is a calyx stone i will remove 70 60% by powder after that once the volume i'll try to make it chips fast and then go for popcorn is giving a little faster maybe around 10 minutes edge of the time for me this after thulium fiber laser because I, I, this is I, 200 300 I remember you demonstrated in uh, your works of uh, yes. two years back in your center. Same thing. Yes. With yes. the fiber. Yeah, I remember. It takes minutes, like three, four minutes. A uh, fine powder. Yeah. And, uh, and more, and, uh, it doesn't matter which laser are you using in uh, in large volume stone. At the end of the day, you will produce large amount of dust and fragments. That's, that's that, no doubt. That is, uh, is very. The question I am coming. I feel that larger axis sheet, uh, if you keep at the end. Uh, This is important point, Anil. I want your comment. I exchange the axis sheath to upper ureter, and I do a gentle front and back viral pool effect to wash the so that uh, the amount of dust, as you said, invariably be there, which may form a small flocule type of thing and maybe form a nidus. Mucus uh, with the uh, stone powder may may form a nidus. So, do you agree? A little bit of wash, if possible, is what. I I don't do it routinely. I mean, I don't I don't do it uh, for the uh, dust removal. But yeah, it can be done. There are uh, literatures from Korea, Sung Cho. They they have used dual lumen catheter at the end of RIRS for uh, uh, irrigation wow. and uh, suction. And I think one guy from India is also using suction in RIRS. Recently, I have seen few yeah. few videos. Sa- Salim Salim uh, Salim who uses thulium fiber laser. Even Dr. Mayesh Deshai sir. Uh, through cleopatra uh, there is a flexible scope without any vision uh, it goes inside you can move up and down and only suction but that's blind cm based blind procedure but big lumen big lumen means 10 french and with that uh, you will suck in all calyces you can flush water suck it but you don't know uh, whether you are sucking the mucosa infant diplum it doesn't have any optics it's a blind sometimes we do matrix with infant feeding tube through the access sheet we pass in front tube suck matrix if at all matrix best is pcnl but rirs can be so i think we will stop here because it's not based on theory and the last question is there uh, uh, what is it uh, yeah dr griffin again how to manage the nagging uh, bleeding or wooze which occurs due to inflamed mucosa uh, little bit of wooze uh, uh, not severe so, bleeding little bit of uh, so because of inflamed mucosa then you don't have to worry so do little gen- gentle irrigation for some time you know if you spend uh, like 30 50 seconds of gentle irrigation then it will clear off you don't yeah. have to do anything yes don't, don't hustle don't rush when there is no good vision don't rush of doing laser lithotripsy you will damage the mucosa more the vision will go worse so yeah. do gentle irrigation for 30 seconds to 1 minute the the uh, sky will get clear yes so we have spent around 40 minutes of time you have finished in 20 22 minutes we discussed enough the main purpose uh, i once again i thank you dr anil today i must tell it is a very crisp presentation video quality was good your internet connection is also good that is the way you plan your uh, presentations i know uh, i thank you once again for the viewers uh, definitely this might have been useful Uh, so we will continue tomorrow we are talking about the mini perk and laser i do all the cases all the stones with mini perk and laser again one more important speaker is dr rajesh kukreja who is a well known uh, stone surgeon in india like any type of stone does mini perk and laser will do the job yes i do that is his talk so with this uh, we will conclude the session we stay in touch 
thank you anil and for we will be repeating more uh, sessions with you honestly uh, because it's a continuous daily 20 minute session thank you once, once again we will conclude the session thank you chandramohan thank you thank you